Hello and welcome to this SQL tutorial with me, James from Matador Software. And today we're looking at the end tile window function in SQL. Uh, we'll look at the syntax breakdown here on geeksforgeeks.org. Then we'll revert back into SQL Server Management Studio and look at a simple example and a slightly more complex real world example. So I don't want to reinvent the wheel and prepare a slide because on Geeks for Geeks there's a perfectly good description and syntax breakdown for the end tile window function. So essentially what we need to know is by using this, it distributes rows of an order partition into a predefined number of roughly equal groups. So it's sort of arbitrarily based on a number expression that we provide. Um, it then segregates things into buckets and we'll look at how this is done in practice. So it um, assigns each group a number expression ranging from one um, and then we sort of go through the bucketing phase from there. So as you can see in the syntax, we need to specify a number expression. The partition by is optional. We don't necessarily need to break it down into partitions or sections within our windows. Um, we might just want to order it by a sort expression. And this is gonna make much more sense as we move on and look at the practical examples, but it's important to bear this in mind. So further on down this page, there is a breakdown by the, these separate parameters. So the number expression is just the integer that we provide, essentially in, a, in layman's terms, the, the number of buckets that we want to segregate things into. Um, partition by is optional, but we may want to use this, you know, to look at results, not just by a sorted list in our query, but we might want to look at, say, locations, um, particular dates or, or whatever we might want to break things down and analyze them by um, and the order by clause uh, pretty self-explanatory but that's just how we want to um, order our bucketing so back into sql server management studio you can use whatever ide you want or development environment um, i've just got a script here to create a very basic table and all we're inserting in is the values one to ten so if i select all Perfectly clear, I've just called it store ID. It's an integer with a not not constraint, numbers one to 10. So let's look at how we can use entile um, to create sort of simple buckets with this sample data. So I've just aliased it and called this um, this entile column store buckets, and I've specified the number expression two. So as you would expect, it's going to assign two different buckets um, where it's going to essentially break things up into equal um, buckets of five. <clears throat> now, it doesn't make a whole lot of sense right now because maybe we're not really analyzing any any figures, values, sales, whatever, um, but it's still helpful. And if we change the order to descending, you'll see that the buckets still, there's still two separate buckets because that's the number expression we provided. Um, but the order of those ones and twos uh, does change. So important to bear in mind. Now, if I was to specify the number expression five, we're essentially going to get five pairs uh, because the the uh, the total amount of stores is 10. So that's pretty self-explanatory. Now, if we were to do something like three, uh, it's not obviously not divisible in whole numbers by three, uh, the number 10. So we would get um, buckets of four and three respectively. So important to bear in mind, um, it won't fail if it's not divisible. Uh, but yeah, we need to bear that in mind that things may not be totally so this even real world not example. To, really what I've done is I've taken some data from the pubs um, database, which you can still get on GitHub. It's a Microsoft sample database. And essentially what I've done is just join together two tables because I wanted to see by store ID, store name and store state. I wanted to aggregate and see the sales, which has led to me just grouping by the, the store ID, the store name um, and the store state. I took a chance to use a CTE to clean up some of these conventions, so it's much better to call it store state um, than state. And as you can see, without doing anything else, uh, very simple, we've got the total sales by the store essentially. And then what we can do is we can reference a CTE um, when we're creating these end tile buckets. So as we can see here, if we execute that there, um, like we did before, we can now assign uh, a bucket for the top sales and a bucket for the, the bottom half of the sales by just using two to create those two um, equal buckets and sorting it in descending order, um, which is fine. And then we could, you know, you could build on this, you could have more temp tables, whatever, you could use case statements, 
um, and build on this, but it's really easy to see how powerful this can become. Likewise, potentially we want pairs here um, where we have, we specify three to break it into um, three pairs because we have six, six rows. Now, like I said earlier, we can increase the power of this by using partition by. So we could partition this by the state where you see we have Washington, California and Oregon, I believe, um, and where California has three rows. So it may be a good idea to partition this into buckets of three. And as you can see, we can now start to almost bucket or rank things um, within our initial partitions. And again, it almost becomes another way of, of ranking things like you may use sort of row number four. So as usual, if you like this content or find it helpful, like, comment, subscribe and share. Thank you.